transformation form is used to graph something quickly. It is called transformation form because we're literally transforming a normal old equation like y equals x, and we're adding things to it. We're adding components. We're going to add an a and an h and a k to this normal old boring equation y equals x. When an a, h, or k is present, that means the same equation has been transformed. Let's look how transformations work on a graph that we know pretty well. And that is y equals x squared. This is the parent graph, y equals x squared. So the parentheses would actually be right here. So first let's look what a would do. If you have a negative a, which is the number out in front of the parentheses, so y equals x squared out in front, what that does is that reflects it around the x-axis, so that would make your parabola turn upside down. If a is a fraction, it's a little fatty fraction, y equals maybe 1 half or 0 0.5 x squared, that would make this compressed toward the x-axis, so it compresses along the y. And if our y equals 10, it stretches the parabola up. And so that would make it super skinny because it stretches it along the y-axis. Now let's look at what h does. h shifts the parabola left and right along the x-axis. And it shifts it along the x-axis. A way to remember that is if it's with x, which it is, it's with x inside these parentheses, then it shifts it along the x-axis because this is the x-axis. Another thing that is important to realize is that the negative is already in the equation. In the transformation form, the x minus is already here. We're just dropping in the h. So if it says x minus 2, you only look at the 2. And that means this moves it to the right two places because you're moving at a positive 2. So the vertex moves one, two places, and the new vertex would be here, and that would shift the parabola over like this. Now, if we had y equals x plus 2 squared, that means since it was supposed to be negative, it was originally x minus a negative 2, which now means the negative was already there, and you're actually shifting it negative 2, which would be this way, and negative 2 would end up here. So remember, anytime it's inside parentheses, the parentheses is going to make it shift the opposite way. The last shift I want to talk about is the k. This one's actually the easiest one because it's a straight shift. Since it is outside the parentheses, so if you had y equals x squared plus 2, since it is outside the parentheses, it does not go opposite. So this is actually connected to y. Since it is outside the parentheses, it's not with x, it is with y. Only things inside the parentheses are with x. So it's outside, that means it shifts it along the y-axis, so it shifts it up and down. So x squared plus 2 would take this parabola and shift it up 2, and your parabola would go up in the air. Transformation form is really cool because it works with all different kinds of functions. As long as you remember to keep the h inside the function and the a and the k outside of these parentheses. So it's really important that you keep the h and the k in the correct place. Remember, h is horizontal along the horizontal axis. So h is with the x. It's horizontal, so think of h for horizontal. And then the k is outside, and the a is outside these parentheses, which makes up the function. This is x squared. It looks like this. This is the absolute value of x. It looks like this. And this is x cubed. It looks like this. So every parent graph, and they're called parent graphs because they have different shapes, but every parent graph has a different shape, 
but the A, H, and K all do the exact same thing. So let's actually try to graph one. Let's go. All right, first of all, you've got to see what function is this. Oh, look, it's a two. That means it's a parabola. So we know right away that we're going to have a function that looks like this. Do I have an A? Yes, I do. That means it's a negative, and that's going to turn my parabola upside down. Awesome. Is it shifted any? Let's look. Does it shift along the x-axis horizontally anyway? Oh, yes, it does. It's going to shift 3. So h equals 3, which means it's going to shift 3 to the right. So 1. So it would have been starting here was our vertex, but now our vertex is going to shift. 1, 2, 3. But uh oh, we're not finished yet. Look at this plus 2. Remember, it's not with x inside. It's outside of x. That means it's going to go up to along the y-axis. So this thing is going to be shifted up to. So it's over 3 and up 2, making our new vertex here. And we know it's going to go down. Yay! All right, so we've got our vertex. And if you want to write the coordinates, that's really helpful too. The vertex is 3, 2. That way you don't forget. And it's a parabola. But now you're like, how wide or how skinny do I make this? Since it's a parabola, you've got to think about y equals x squared. Now remember, whatever number you put into x, you're just going to square it. So if you put in negative 2, you're going to square that and get 4. If you put in negative 1, you're going to square that and get 1. If you put in 1, 1 squared is 1. And if you put in 2, 2 squared is 4. This is for every single parent function. And it happens starting at the vertex. Now, this is not dilated. It's just rotated with a negative 1. There's no compression. There's no fraction. There's no stretch. It's just a normal parabola. So from the vertex, we're going to go over 1 on the x. And that gives us a 1 on the y. If you go over 1 on the x, you go 1 on the y. If you go negative 1 on the x, so you go back 1, you also go 1 on the y. Remember, we're turning it upside down. If you go 2 in the positive direction on the x, so from the vertex 1, 2, you go 1, 2, 3, 4 on the y. And if you go negative 2, negative 2, you go down 1, 2, 3, 4. So this, our, our vertex used to be here at 0, 0 for y equals x squared. But we have transformed this. We turned it upside down, and then we shifted it. So this is our new parabola. You can either put arrows, or if you don't want to put arrows, you can just keep going to the end, which means the same thing, that it goes on forever. Let's look at a different example that's not a parabola. Delta math has a bunch of these you can practice on. So what it's going to say to you, the graph of x, f of x is the solid graph below. So what function is this? This is an absolute value graph. y equals the absolute value of x. And so this is going to apply. What has happened to this graph? Well, first of all, it's been turned upside down. So how do you do that? Y equals, you put a negative outside of the absolute value brackets. That's how you get it upside down. Awesome. What else has happened? Oh, look, it was shifted this way. It used to be at 0, 0, and then it got shifted to negative 5. Don't forget our equation up here y equals negative x. Our equation already has the negative in it, right? And so we have to see how far it's shifting. It shifted negative 5. Negative 5. Oh, that is gross. A negative, negative 5. So we're going to rewrite that as y equals negative absolute value x plus 5 because a negative and a negative make a positive. Please notice that the abs, the negative went outside and the h went inside. Let's look at one more. Whoa, this is a weird looking graph. Well, if you don't remember your graphs from your parent function, and you can always figure them out because you can go and look at your parent graph notes that you made, but delta math is super helpful. And they're like, hey, this is the graph we have. So I'm going to write the new transformation form up here y equals a. Now the square root symbol kind of acts like parentheses. 
x minus, we're going to have the h inside the function with the x and the k outside and also the a is outside. So y equals, and we're not going to have a's for a while unless they're upside down. So we're just going to write it like this because it did not go upside down. x minus h plus k. And then we're going to see where this guy moved. So initially, he started out here. This is his locator point at 0, 0. But it shifted. First of all, it shifted both ways. We are down here at this point, what, 2, negative 4. And x is 2, and y is negative 4. So it looks like we shifted along the x-axis by 2. Since x is 2, this goes with the x. And, since, and then it shifted where? Then it shifted down 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. It shifted down along the y-axis, negative 4. So this negative 4 is along the y, and it's the y-ordered pair, and it goes here. So now you can just rewrite this. y equals the absolute value of x minus, that was already there, minus what? 2, and then it went where? Down 4. And that is how you get this equation. There's lots more practice on delta math if you need it.